So time for an update of Rupert the Sauramatum Venosum. Uh, it's almost a month since our last update, so let's take a look at how things have progressed. So it's the 23rd of December 2023, so we're about a month into the growth of Rupert now. And I thought for this video and this update, I'd just show you some of the other um, uh, tubers that are in storage. So there's a couple of them that are waking up like Rupert. And um, the first video explains all about um, what this Saramatum venosum is and the fact that it's an aroid. So if you haven't seen that yet, please just drop to that video first and you'll see the progress from the start to here. Um, and the big thing to note here is that the flower spike has changed significantly. So the bract has peeled back a little bit here and it's revealed more of the flower spike. So if we start with measurements, um, the four measurements that we're taking is height of the inflorescence, the width of the tuber, the height of the tuber and the weight. So I'll start with the weight and I've already weighed him um, and he's now 547 grams from 561. So he's he's lost, you know, something in the region of, of 20 grams, something like that, or, or, or of that region. Um, now, that would be what we would expect to see. So this tuber is feeding the growth of this inflorescence. And remember, there's no roots yet. So we don't get our roots until the end of this cycle or this part of the cycle. So this is all coming from the tuber, from the, from the cells in here. So it's feeding itself. And this is what happens in nature. So it doesn't need water, um, doesn't need any nutrients. It's all packed into the parenchyma cells in here. Um, so it's feeding and therefore we should, in theory, see a shrinking of this in, in, in both size and in weight. And that is backed up by the evidence. So um, let's just go through the dimensions one by one. So the, the, the big one that should have grown is the height. So as we know from the last video, his inflorescence overall was 110 or, or 11 centimetres. So let's see what he is now with the calipers. So let's reel them right down and get as close as I can. Now I've, I've already done this, but um, this is this is basically how we do it. Um, so I'll just move the calipers down and without moving them out, it's difficult, but it's actually 140 now. So it's gone up from 110 or, or um, 110 millimeters to 140 millimeters. And obviously the bract has peeled off the first one. So that's what you'd expect. There's a good chunk of growth. So it's, it's you know, it's definitely going well. So that's only in, I think it's three weeks actually since we did the, the last update. So that's what we'd expect. And that would mean that we should see some shrinkage in here. So if we quickly take measurements here. So if you've followed along, you'll remember it was 120 millimetres across and it's now 110. So it's lost a whole centimetre of its of its volume if measured in this way, which would I, I would indicate, I would guess, sorry, that it's the same back to front because the whole thing is shrinking and you can see that the 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 surface is shriveling. So that's not just drying up. Um, it is drying up on the outer surface, but it's actually being used up inside. And again, that's perfectly normal and exactly what, what we would expect to be seeing at this point. So the last measurement was the height and we should have lost a little bit of height as well. It was measured on this side, so it's very difficult to do. And that one, I could just about see from there. So the height has gone from, it was 90 and it's now 75. So it's it's shrinking on all dimensions and, and that's perfectly normal. And it's exactly what we want him to do. So looking at the process, looking at the full um, life cycle sequence here on the illustration, you can see we're a couple of steps in and we've got the beginning of the flower spike showing and we're, we're well on the way to seeing an inflorescence growing. So we're about halfway down the process to get, to get an inflorescence up. And then as soon as that's done, as soon as we've got our inflorescence, luckily, we, we, you know, we may have a couple of them at the same time. I, I don't know yet because um, I've got more in the garden, which are a bit later than this. So very much doubt that we'll get Rupert to actually get fertilized. But as long as we get a flower out of him and we get to see that and then we get the leaves and the roots, that will be that will be what I would want this year from, from Rupert. Whether if we're very, very lucky, I may get him fertilized uh, or pollinated, should I say. 
but my, my gut feeling is the timing and because he's being grown inside might might be a little bit off so as i said these are some of his uh his siblings uh, and some of his um relations so this one was was grown alongside him um, I don't think that is uh, an, an offset from Rupert. I think it's just another one that I've had in the ground. But a lot of these, um, they were all in the same box this morning. So I'm guessing they're all of the same um, family. Um, and I just keep them all together. Uh, and again, remember, I keep half of my my Saramatum outside. Which, and I don't track them like this. Um, and they've got a lot of mixed genes. So what I'll tend to do is at the end of this, at the, at the start of the season next year, so probably about... February when I start planting these I'll try and mix them up so that I get you know you know I, I get a mix of genes all over time and um, as these grow up I kind of lose track of them at that stage but that's where he's at now Um, I'll zoom in a little bit we'll have a little quick look at him close up so you can see his his um the, the, the patterning is coming up nicely uh, it's definitely a flower spike um as far as I can tell um and you know these these older uh, bracts are are dying back. This little thing is looks like it might wake up, which might be a nice thing to happen. And as as I've already said, he's you know you can see the size reduction already. So there is a, you know he's shriveling, but he's super super healthy, and um, you know he obviously likes living in here just on top of this pot. No soil, no water, nothing at this stage. And as a second update, I'm really happy with that. Thanks for following along with this Ceramatum venosums uh, life cycle. This is only the second update and um, we're going to keep doing it all year. If you want to follow along, his name is Rupert, as I've already told you. So please feel free to watch the previous videos. If you don't know about this plant, have a look at those, the, the, that first video. And obviously, please give us a thumbs up if you like this kind of content. There isn't enough content on YouTube about Hardy Aroid. So I, I, me and my friends would like to rectify that over the next year. So help us do that by supporting the channel. And, and the, you know, a, th a, a, a thumbs up helps, but a subscribe really does help grow the channel. So click the subscribe down below and help us carry on giving you this kind of information.